So, I used to be a security officer at a homeless shelter earlier this year. I worked there for five months before leaving. Before I really begin, I have tons of creepy and scary stories from my time there. So back in March, I was at work at doing what I needed to do. On the ground floor was a daytime-only homeless shelter, and on the top was a government homeless outreach office. This is who my contract was through. But I had to keep the entire building secure, even though the shelter was a different organization. The government office was the mental health branch, so it wasn't uncommon for crazy people to, well, act crazy. This particular day, an individual came up to pick up his medication. The man took the medication, walked over to the couch that sits in the office. The place is laid out like a doctor's office, and I was posted in the lobby. After sitting down, the guy starts digging through his backpack and pulls out a bag full of white pills. This instantly catches my attention. He grabs his pocket knife, doesn't open the blade, and smashed three or four pills, uses his hand to make the dust into three lines, then he snorts all the dust up. What remained he swept and flung off the table. This is now considered to be acting hostile and potentially illegal. So I walk over and start trying to ask the man to leave. He keeps telling me, I gotta take my meds. I inform him that he needs to leave some more, and then he says out loud without looking at me, You know, I got a suppressed 9mm in my bag. That'll make you and that receptionist shut up. Alarm bells start ringing. I know I have a potentially active shooter scenario in my hands, and I'm an unarmed officer. I calmly walk backwards to the receptionist and whisper her to get the other client up, call 911, and go lock herself in an exam room and to not open the door. She does this as well as informs the other caseworkers of the situation, and they all lock and barricade the doors. There are cameras in the lobby, so this was all recorded and turned over to the police. After many other attempts to get the men to leave and informing them that the police were called and en route, he gets up, gets in my face, and tells me quietly, I'm coming back for you one day, and then storms out. The police arrive five minutes later. They examine the footage, put out a APB on the man, and take samples of the powder left on the table. A few days later, I'm informed that the man was found with no guns and no drugs, that the powder turned out to be an antipsychotic medication. He had allegedly lost the bottle they came in. Nothing bad happened, but still, as a 19-year-old unarmed security guard, it scared the crap out of me. For those curious, I still work for the same company. I now work third shift in a completely different location. So to the crazy homeless dude that threatened me with a silenced 9mm, let's not meet again. And I hope you aren't still thinking about seeing me again. This happened a long time ago, but a similar post made me think of this horrific experience that I had in my early 20s. My friend and I went into a JCPenney's, a store for clothes, kitchen items, jewelry, etc. For her to exchange a package of Anzis for her infant daughter. We both had our toddler sons, sitting facing each other in a tandem stroller. After being in the store for a few minutes, they both started tugging back and forth on the package of onesies. The correct size my friend needed to exchange the originals for. I grabbed the package from them and threw it into the compartment under the stroller, ending the game of tug of war. My friend did a little more shopping. The boys did some more fighting and whining. She exchanged the onesies and cashed out the rest of her items. We left that store I got lunch in the food court let the babies play in the play place and grabbed coffee, ready to head out. As we received our coffees, a security officer approaches me and asks me what I stole. Completely dumbfounded, I tell him that I didn't steal anything. He tells me that he has me on video stealing, and if I confess, he'll go easy. I tell him that he's wrong. He can check my purse as I have nothing. He immediately pulls the package of onesies from the bottom of the stroller. A star toddler screaming. She didn't notice that I put the package at the bottom of the stroller, and she had grabbed another. 
She didn't pay attention because she bought other things and I was trying to keep the boys from poking each other in the eyes. I tell the security guard that it wasn't intentional and explain how the boys were grabbing on it, to which led to my throwing it to the bottom of the stroller. He goes on a rant on how he's heard every excuse in the book and that I'm just making it worse for myself. So I bring up the timeline and ask, why if I intended to steal for an infant that isn't mine by the way, why would I stay for lunch, let the kids play, and calmly sit down to have coffee? My friend also confirms that she has the infant daughter, and yes, the boys were annoying each other during our shopping trip. This apparently made the security guard upset, because he went to full-on commando mode, pulling me by the arm back to JC Penney's and into the security room. We get inside and I urge him to watch the security tape again, figuring it'll see the babies fussing and understand the confusion. He leaves me in the room for 45 minutes, to which I figure he had to have seen the babies fussing and fighting. Nope, he had come back in and he calls me a liar. He says it clearly showed me shoplifting and he goes to call the cops. I'm frustrated but I agree to the cops being called, because I figure they'll see the tapes and understand the mistake. He didn't like this either. He tells me that once the cops get involved, that he is required to call Child Protective Services, which will immediately open a case, and that they will have to take my son into custody until I have a court date. Keep in mind, I'm 23 at the time, and I've never been in a situation like this before, so I believed his lying ass. I break down crying and telling the guy that I'm being honest, I'm not a thief, I have a clean record. Why would I steal clothes for a child that isn't mine? He was cold. He told me the most innocent looking people are the ones who steal. He served every excuse and lie that you can think of. And I have three minutes to confess before he calls the cops and has my son taken away from me. I still insist in my innocence, because I was, and I beg for a manager. Bear in mind my friend was outside the whole time with my son and hers, unbothered other than worrying about me. The security guard leaves and comes back 10 minutes later. No manager but with a paper, which is basically a generic written confession, saying I shoplifted in the amount of $6.99, literally under $10, and then I agreed to pay restocking fees, loss and prevention fees, and to not enter the store for 3 years. Now I'm hysterically crying, pleading with him that I did nothing wrong. I'm not a shoplifter. The only thing I did was exercise poor judgment by not specifying to my friend that the onesies were on the bottom. He tells me that he has no sympathy for liars or thieves, and had already called the cops and they're on their way to arrest me and to take my son, unless I sign the paper. And so I panic, quickly sign the form to which he releases me. I tell my friend, she drove, to hightail it out of the mall ASAP. After telling the story to her in the car, and to other people later, I found out that it was all BS. The security guard had lied and manipulated me, and should have lost his job for that. But he was so far in my head that I didn't want to revisit the situation for even a second. It's been over a decade since this had happened, and I still get anxiety just thinking about it. So, rookie mall security guard, let's not meet again, ever. About four years ago, I worked as a laundress. I worked 5am to 5pm and would often work alone. We usually have a security guard posted near the parking lot. They carry a radio and pepper spray, and later in the day they patrol the building. A new guy had started and I never saw him watching over the parking lot when I came in each morning. Throughout my shift, he would come into my laundry room. He was talkative, but I noticed he would look at my body a lot when he thought I wouldn't notice. One day I came into work and started putting my stuff away, getting ready to begin. I hadn't turned on all the lights yet, so there were parts of the room that I couldn't see. Suddenly I hear radio static in the corner of the room, and I see a red radio light. I turn on the lights and the new guy is in the corner of the room, hiding and watching me. When I asked him what he was doing there, he said he was just hanging out and started laughing. It was obvious that he was waiting for me. He ended up doing this so often that I got used to it. 
I came in early one day and was working in one of our smaller areas. He came into the smaller room to talk to me. He's a big guy, so I couldn't get around him. He was just talking to me, but I couldn't move or leave the room because he blocked the door. He asked me why I came in early that day, and I told him it was because I had to leave early later. He told me that I was required to tell him all of my hours so that he always knew where I was. He was leaning over me. He was very tall, and I felt like he was trying to upset me. I had this horrible feeling in my stomach that he was about to try something. So I pushed past him and called my supervisor who said he would keep an eye on him. I told him that I had a bad gut feeling about this guy and that I needed to leave for the day. The next day, he was fired. Apparently, he wasn't in the guard tower at the start of the ship because he would spend mornings in the woods near the parking lot, recording girls walking in for their shifts each morning. They also found a huge collection of pop or soda cans and coffee cups in his locker that he had admitted that he had dug out from various trash bins around where I and the other girls worked. His wife shortly left him and took full custody of their newborn baby. So crazy security guard, let's not meet. For context, I'm a 5'3", 24-year-old female and working as a programmer for an IT company in the Philippines. Now the area where my office is is comprises of three buildings. Building A where my office is, Building B and Building C. To get to the other building it would take you like around 10 minutes to get there. It's important for later. This happened to me a year ago and around the end of February until March. I just got out of a bad breakup at that time and I really intended to just focus on myself and not, not meet anyone yet. I just got out of work and it was around 7pm on a Friday night. And I went to my usual waiting spot, which has benches and is located at the back of our building near the entrance of the underground parking lot for our company shuttle and Omar, a shuttle dispatcher that's here. Now, I've known Omar for two years and he's someone I consider now as a friend. And we would often chat about our lives even the breakup with my ex then, and joke around. He's a 40 plus year old guy and he gives out this big fatherly vibe. So he's someone that I really trust. That night he was there and with someone new that I didn't recognize. Our combo went like this. Omar says, Oh hi, good thing you're here. I would like you to meet someone since he told me that he really wants to meet you for a long time now. And then this guy stood up and shook my hand. I greeted him as just to be polite and this new guy, let's name him Ray. He's average looking and a little shorter to my height, 5'1", and he instantly gives an off 5 as soon as I shook his hand. I thought that would be the end of it, but he proceeded to talk to me for a few minutes while I wait for my shuttle to arrive. Omar has purposely left me and this Ray guy so that we could talk to get to know each other. I'm actually puzzled at this point because, one, I have no clue who this guy is, and why would he be so eager to meet me? And two, I clearly told Omar before that I'm not into meeting anyone just yet. But for the sake of being polite and nice, I talked to Ray but we never reached any personal questions, exchanging numbers, social media accounts, or even telling him my full name. I just told him my nickname. And I left it just at that when I finally got on the shuttle. Fast forward to a week and Friday again. I got off at work at the same time and surprise surprise. Ray is there again with Omar and a security guard. They were chatting but as soon as I came, Ray instantly greeted me and at this point, I'm a little creeped out. As I expected our encounter would only be a one time thing. I just said hi and I brushed him off and sat on the benches to wait for my shuttle again, and of course, as this guy doesn't seem to know the definition of personal space, sat beside me and talked to me again, but this time he asked for my cell phone number. I told him off and clearly said that I'm not giving out my number to strangers, and just giving him one word answers just to give an impression that I wasn't interested at all. He would ask, why wouldn't you give me your number? I just want to be friends. 
and I could see in his face that he was getting frustrated every time I told him that I wasn't giving it to him. This happened while Omar and the security guard was looking at us from afar, but this went on until I got on the shuttle again. As soon as I got home, I mindlessly scrolled through my timeline and saw a notification that I have a new friend request and guess what, it's Ray, and he even messaged me with a, please accept my request. I just deleted it, but now I'm pretty shocked since I didn't tell him my Facebook account so how did he manage to find me? The following day was the last straw when I decided to get off at an earlier time, so that I could avoid him, but to my surprise, he was there again, waiting for me, along with Omar and the security guard. Ray immediately runs up to me to say hi, but I brush him off, and dreaded the fact that I would have to wait with this creep again when I saw that my shuttle isn't there yet. He immediately asked me if I accepted his Facebook request, and I decided to play dumb and said that I haven't been active on Facebook, and I haven't seen anything. He got disappointed and he fiddled with his phone for a bit, and then revealed his phone to show my Facebook profile, and asked me if this was me. I said yes, and this time, I was completely ignoring him at the point and playing with my phone and told him that I wasn't going to accept his request because I didn't know him. And then Ray grabbed my phone out of my hands angrily, and said that he was going to add himself using my Facebook account if I wouldn't. I muttered, what the heck? And grabbed my phone from him, and with perfect timing, I got on the shuttle in a hurry and told the driver to go. At this point, I could confirm that this guy could be stalking me, and now knows my daily schedule and social media accounts. I reported this incident to my manager, and told her how this was already happening for some time now. She was surprised that I didn't report it earlier, but I blamed it on my lack of assertiveness and fear that I must be overreacting to his advances. We reported the incident to office security and told them what happened and they couldn't do anything at first as, one, they need actual evidence about my allegations to him. Two, I only knew Ray by his first name and they would need more information than that. I didn't bother to ask where he was from or if he was even working in our office or building which is dumb of me, and I should have asked in the first place. My manager then decided that I should at least be accompanied by some of my office mates to confirm the situation, and the guys volunteered to accompany me every time I got off of work. They joined me for a couple of days, and no matter what time I got out, Ray was there to harass me. I felt bad for my office mates, as they had to deal with his BS as well. The first instance when he saw me with my office mates... I could see the visible anger in his eyes, and he would try to butt into our conversation even if I were ignoring him. At one point, when I'm talking with my office mates, he let out an exasperated sigh and said, uh, Can I talk to you for a second, please? What do you want? I just want to talk to you. If you don't, I'll leave. Okay. And then I went back to talking to my office mates. He butted in once more and asked that I should introduce him to my office mates. And when I didn't, he proceeded to introduce himself instead, which irked the heck out of my office mates and I as his behavior doesn't seem normal at all. After that incident, my office mates and I told my manager what happened and how dangerous this guy might be. She decided that we should escalate it to HR and have them deal with it immediately. Gladly, HR responded, and they took the situation seriously, and began to do an investigation on who Ray might be. The same day, they sent an email that, after searching through records, it turns out Ray wasn't an employee of our office, and they might need to talk to building security to find out more about this guy. HR also requested our office security to escort me in to observe the situation. I honestly felt relieved as now I'll feel safe for the time being, while they search who Ray might be. He still showed up even if I got out later earlier than usual, but never went near me when he saw I was accompanied by security, but he would just keep his distance and stare at me, smile creepily and linger outside my shuttle until I left. HR contacted me for a meeting with him and with my manager about some news on Ray, and I was shocked by the information that they had found. 
Ray was not an employee of our building or office, but in fact, a temp in the security office in Building C. I then thought, okay, this creep is really putting in an effort for someone who is clearly not interested. And if he's a temp, meaning that there's a chance I won't be able to see him after this. But then, what HR said, it showed me to the bone. He was a temp assigned to work on the security cameras, meaning he had access to all the building cameras. It had been his way to spy on me, and the reason why he was able to be there at the exact time that I got out. HR had already spoken to a supervisor and gave a warning to Ray and, of course. Ray denied the allegations, even if I had witnesses against him. The supervisor wanted to apologize to me in person, but I decided not to as I just wanted this to be over with. After that meeting, I never saw Ray again and I reckoned he must have been kicked out after HR issued a warning against him. As for Omar, I never saw him as well, and it felt bad but he was also part of the people who enabled Ray and didn't do anything when I was clearly getting harassed. I received a bit of backlash from the security guards in the building for a while as well, hearing them say that I was overreacting and I should have accepted his advances, which was disgusting as I heard the same thing being said by female building staff as well. Nothing strange happened for a few days, but then the security guard that was with Omar at the time when Ray was harassing me added me on Facebook, but I didn't make much of it and I just deleted the request. I'm still working in the same office and building as of today, and I've been totally shaken up by the incident that I decided to just keep my distance from people so I could avoid this from ever happening again. And to Ray, no means, no FFS, and let's not meet again.